first off, I'm not Steve Carell. Uh, yeah, he does kind of look like him too, doesn't he? Shut up. All right. He kind of sounds like him too. Shut up again. All right. All right, I'll give you one. You ready? <laughs> all right, that's all you get. What is this? I would like to thank the third grade at Provost Elementary School for leaving their set from last night's play for me. A door that goes to nowhere. Nice metaphor for my career. I, I, uh, been doing comedy 24 years. I've never missed one show. Not one. Oh, thank you. That means nothing. I, uh, never, however, had this show been last week, I might have had to cancel. Here's what happened. I woke up and I clearly had some crazy allergy to something. I was in no pain, but my face was like super swollen, like my eyes were sealed shut, my lips were really swollen and red. So I went to my doctor and she gave me a steroid shot, some medication, she's like, give it a day, you should be okay. And I asked my doctor, what do you think caused this? And my doctor said, quote, could be anything. <laughs> All right, well, what do I owe you for that diagnosis, doc? Uh, I'm gonna try a little harder here, open up one of these medical books. <laughs> WebMD. <laughs> I don't go on Tinder and just pretend to be looking something up. Just pretend to care about me. <laughs> I find it interesting that of all the jobs in the world, that the medical profession is the one job you can get away with the words, could be anything. <laughs> no other job has that. Like, I mean, you're shopping for a new car, right? You're walking around the lot, you're checking out the inventory, here comes the sales guy. Excuse me, what kind of car is this? <laughs> could be anything. <laughs> could be a Lamborghini, could be a minivan. I... <laughs> you're at an Italian restaurant, waiter walks by, excuse me, what is this pasta stuffed with? It's really good. <laughs> could be anything. <laughs> Chicken, beef, minotaur, I don't Pick one. We live in amateur nation. Amateurs, people who are doing life wrong. You're surrounded by them every day. Okay, so I'm from Ohio, lived in Los Angeles for 24 years, recently moved back to Ohio, right? When I was in California, I heard this dumb comment every single week by someone who did not live in California, right? I would, I would go on the road, hey, where'd you come in from? California, here it comes, California. <laughs> Just a matter of time before California has the big earthquake, breaks up and falls into the ocean. Yes, because luckily all the state's borders are perforated. Um, and, and, and it's not a coupon. It doesn't just tear off exactly at Nevada. Like the people in Arizona are like, whoa, man, we almost fell into the ocean. Like I'm just gonna float away, bye. I said, come on, man, learn something about geometry. All right. Uh, so glad you got that, because I've done that joke. I cried, yeah, really? I'm like, uh-oh. Yeah. I mean, now, you guys are, out of all the crowds I've had, you guys are the most recent, so thanks for coming out. I, uh... <laughs> You're, you're a smart crowd. I was doing a show, no joke, after the show, hanging out afterwards, shaking hands with people. Very nice couple come up to me afterwards, and uh, the wife says, hey, we thought you were hilarious. We were curious as to who some of your favorite comedians are. So I tell them, and then I ask them, well, who do you guys like? And I quote, she says, well, we like Dennis Miller, but some of his jokes are so smart, to understand him, you practically need a thorax. <laughs> Sure, thorax might help you. Maybe some antenna. Since we're naming parts of the ant, that's a special kind of amateur right there. Because ironically, you don't know what a thesaurus is, which will pull thorax out of the air. Yeah, I'm impressed. Amateurs everywhere. Oh, on the roads, you know this. All right, this happened to me just the other day. This has happened to every person who's ever driven a car. Listen carefully. Try to make a left-hand turn in the left turn lane. Got it? Waiting for the green arrow. Okay, listen. Car number one, guy is up uh, at the red light. Car number two behind him, I'm behind him. I'm car number three, several other cars behind me. We're all waiting for the green arrow. Now, you never know how long those arrows are gonna last, right? Sometimes they're really quick. Sometimes they last a long time. I admit it, patience is not my best quality. I work on it every day. Green arrow came on. 
I gave it like five Mississippis, okay? <laughs> and no one's moving, so I admit it. I honked. Now, I did not blast the horn out of anger. I did, you know, brr, brr, brr. no, no, no. I do what you call the scuff honk, where you just kind of like, brr, brr, just kind of, just let them know you're not a serial killer. Just like, just, hey, <laughs> amateur, stop texting, go, right? Here's why I'm upset. Why am I the guy even honking? That is car number two's job. <laughs> Hey, if you learn anything from my set tonight, if you're ever car number two, you are the spokesperson for all of us. Behind, you're the representative, okay? Thank you. Then it gets worse because car number two flips me off and then honks backwards at me. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't honk. I, there you go. You can't, I can't bank one off the wall and hit that guy over there. That is honking 101. Honks go this way. You amateur. And, oh, speaking of amateurs, did you know this? The leading cause of murder in the United States is Trader Joe's parking lots. What is happening? No one knows what they're doing. They get in the Trader Joe's parking lot. They're going in, the out, up, the down. And the amateurs that are backing into their parking spaces, what are you, robbing the Trader Joe's? Is this for your quick getaway? What are you, John Dillinger? You can come running out with your little pink Hawaiian recyclable bags, come sliding across the hood of the General Lee like the Dukes of Hazard and peel out, you rookie. <laughs> well, I got my car wash the other day. Amateurs. Got my car wash. One of those car washes where you get out of a car, right? And they run it through for you, they detail it, do a nice job. A uh, lady in front of me is in line. She's reading the options board, all the extra stuff, the hot wax, air freshener, bikini wax, whatever she's doing. <laughs> and she's taking forever. I'm like, what is the holdup? No joke. She turns around to me and says kind of sheepishly, she goes, excuse me, sir, what is the Polish wax? <laughs> Like, uh, yeah, that'd be polish wax, man. Uh, and how did you find the car wash? Is what I would have known. Actually, let's take this back a step. How is it that you can drive a car? Let's start with that. I wanted to tell her, oh, the polish wax, what that is. A bunch of guys come out with accordions. And they rub your car down with a kielbasa. And the rain just beads off the paint. You should get that. Amateurs. I was driving the other day in my neighborhood. You never drive in your neighborhood. You see like on telephone poles, you'll see signs and a reward for a found dog or a missing cat, something like that. I wish I was making this up. I memorized it. Here you go. You ready? Reward, <laughs> missing giant tortoise. <laughs> Has been in our family over 65 years. <laughs> Weighs over 500 pounds. <laughs> Here's my favorite part. And is gray. <laughs> Why are you telling me the color? Are you gonna be out with your friends looking for this thing? And she's like, there it is. I'm like, no, no, that's a 565-year-old brown tortoise that must not be the one I'm looking for. I'm trying to focus, shut up. Here's my question. First of all, how irresponsible are you? You can't keep track of a 500-pound, 65-year-old tortoise? The only thing slower than that is a rock. But seriously. Second of all, how long do you have to be gone from home <laughs> before a 500 pound, 65 year old tortoise is even out of eye shot? A month? <laughs> now I can still see it. <laughs> and who passes down a tortoise generation to generation? <laughs> well, son, you've graduated college. You're a man now. Here's Tippy. <laughs> ah, thanks. This is the perfect pet for my third floor walk up apartment. <laughs> So you're laughing. I tell my buddy, who is a comedian, thinking he'll appreciate this story. And he, he doesn't even pause. He goes, oh, you know what happened? The people probably went on vacation and the tortoise panicked. <laughs> Dude, can tortoises panic? Is that a thing? I've watched a lot of nature shows. I've never seen tortoise panic on their face. I mean, tortoise, uh, do those words don't even go together. I'd make it a nice name for a punk band, you know, tortoise panic. You know, <laughs> But this is the same friend of mine, right? Uh, I've known this guy about 10 years, and he goes, hey, guess what? I quit smoking. And I'm like, I never knew you smoked. I never saw him smoke. 
And I said, when did you smoke? He goes, ah, I wasn't proud of it. I just did it now and then, so I quit. So of course, I'm his friend, so I asked him, like, are you okay? Everything healthy? You good? He goes, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm fine. And I'd never smoked, so I was curious. I said, well, what was the thing that made you want to quit? His words, he goes, I can't take any more of these commercials, the people with the holes in their necks. It's freaking me out. <laughs> Have you seen those? There's they're like 15 of these commercials. They're pretty disturbing, but they would wake me up if I was a smoker. There, there's two that freak me out. The one guy, he's in the shower, which makes sense. Hey, I'm naked. I got a hole in my neck. I'm vulnerable. Bring in the camera crew. I, it's... <laughs> But he's sh showering. He's like, if you're taking a shower. <laughs> if you're taking a shower, make sure you cover up your neck hole. Yeah. Yeah, instant access to your internals. Maybe keep the scalding hot water out of it. That would be job one. It's called a stoma. The second, the other commercial is my favorite. The woman, she goes, if you're choking to death, it's not mouth to mouth, it's mouth to stoma. Okay. Listen, if you're my friend and you have a hole in your neck and you're choking, you're gonna die. No. 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 No, I'm not putting my mouth on your blowhole, all right? I'm not happening. Plan your life better, all right? I just chew more thoroughly, whatever you gotta do, man. And that's like the one be benefit, right? You got like a Dorito stuck in there. You're like, hang on. <laughs> Actually, sorry. Hang on. <laughs> 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 There's like 20 of those commercials. What is the lobby like for auditions for that? You get like 20 people in the waiting room. I really hope I book this. <laughs> this could be my big break. <laughs> How long have you been waiting? I mean, if you can't book this, that's on you. It says right in the breakdown, must have a legit hole in your neck. That's the job you've been waiting for. Agent calls you, you booked it, woohoo! Sorry, woohoo. I was worried there'd be some guy out in the audience. Hey man, that's not funny. I'm gonna beat you up after the show. You'll see me outside the theater, I'll be like this, like, all right, let's go. I win, all right. <laughs> you guys are on board, I like it, that's nice. That's good. Amateurs everywhere. Went to the 99 cent store the other day. Let me tell you, I've never felt more wealthy or better looking my entire life. <laughs> Seriously, if you feel bad about yourself, like, I gotta drop some weight, my car's in the shop. You walk into the 99 cent store, like, I am a supermodel, and I'm driving a Ferrari. I... Ego fixed, done. But there's amateurs there too, right? I bought 10 things, okay? I bought, I bought some stuff, and uh, the woman's scanning them, and they're beeping, that all of a sudden one of the items doesn't beep, and she freaks out. She's like, beep, beep. <laughs> And I go, all right, hey, pick anything. It's all 99 cents. Pick one of my items, do it twice, right? So then she's like, I have to do it manually. So she, there's all these buttons. Why is there, there should be just a big 99 and a plus sign on the catcher. Just everything. Bam, bam, that's all you should have to do. You can work there and have no arms. Just smash it with your head. Like some kind of facial whack-a-mole game. I'm like, here's $11, I got 10 things, keep it. Can I go home? <laughs> Amateurs. Went shopping their day, needed a pair of slippers. Go to Macy's, walk into the men's department. There's a sales lady. I'm like, excuse me, where are the men's slippers? She goes, what do you mean? What are you talking about? What, like bedroom slippers? No, hiking slippers. How many kinds of slippers are there? <laughs> now I need a good all-terrain, waterproof mountain slipper, okay? Something rugged, something with a steel toe in it, okay? Timberland making slippers now? What's the matter with you? Amateurs. I went to the grocery store the other day because I was tired of being in a good mood. And, uh, oh, I hate it there so much. I, I just, I have to get food, but I, so I go to the 15 items or less. And I know you think where this is going, but listen. So I got my things. There's a guy in front of me. Sorry, man, it was a guy. And here's this whole shopping list. One big pen. I looked at him like, dude, I will give you a pen. Get out of the line, you're killing us back here. Right, he didn't even buy a 12 pack of pens, he bought one. 
Who buys pens? When was the last time you bought a pen? Third grade, school supply shopping day. <laughs> you don't need to buy. Pe pens are everywhere. Pens just exist in the atmosphere, all right? Put your hand up. Wait 30 seconds. A pen will hit it, all right? You have none. There's five in her purse. It all equals out in the wash. <laughs> Buying pens. Not even a 12-pack. One. It was $1.29. It gets worse. No, no, no credit card, no debit card, no cash. Check. <laughs> It was legal anymore. I'm like, and he asked the cashier, he's like, can I borrow your pen? I'm like, there it is! Take it! Run! What's he gonna chase it? Come back here, you! No! It's a stupid pen! Amateurs! Doing life wrong. Amateurs at restaurants, oh yeah. You get better, like, all right, when I go on the road, I like to eat at the, the mom and pop places. I, I like to support the small businessman uh, to go to, right? I do, I, I'm a huge fan of that. I like to, I, you know, I like to support, you, the, the, the food's better, the service is better, you get to know the locals and everything. So I was on the road, I saw this old school diner, neon sign flashing, try our omelet breakfast special, $5.99. I'm like, great. Walk in, it's old school. Jukebox in the corner. The, the waitress had a big beehive hairdo, right? She called me honey. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. I sit down and uh, she's like, well, what do you have there, hon? I said, how about that omelet special you got going? And she goes, what kind? And I said, oh, yeah, um, how about an egg white omelet? And she says, oh, um, um, I don't think we have egg whites. <laughs> it's like, here we go. And I said, oh, do you have eggs? And she goes, well, of course. <laughs> All right, well, I don't know how to break this to you, Flo, but like 75% seven, of that egg is white. She goes, oh, you mean the shell? <laughs> yeah, give me an egg shell omelet. I like, and I like my omelets real jagged and sharp. I like a throat culture first thing in the morning. I'm, Can I have some lemonade for the cuts? What's wrong? I'm explaining an egg to an adult. <laughs> It's like, how have you lived this long and not drunk Clorox by mistake? What's the matter with you? <laughs> so I'd rather eat at the, the mom and pop places. I, I, I try to avoid chain restaurants like a Fridays and Applebee's. The food's okay. I can't get past the atmosphere in these places. When did it become hip and trendy to nail like sharp, heavy, jagged farm implements to the walls and ceiling? <laughs> yeah, because at home I often eat under a wheelbarrow. What is wrong with that? I don't understand. How am I supposed to relax in this place? I'm trying to eat. I got an anvil above my head. Is this the Wiley e. Coyote Cafe in here? Waiter comes over. Can I get you anything else? Yeah, can I have a little umbrella and a sign that says, Yikes! How about that? <laughs> Amateurs. Buffets? No, don't do buffet restaurants. No. No, I like variety. My question is, who's Choosing who's picking what goes into the buffet. You know, if you've been to a buffet, you got your tray and you're putting stuff on it. By the time you get to the end, you have assembled this bizarre meal that you would never eat at your own house. I'm out with the other comedians like, Lou, what do you got? I'm like, I got chicken, pixie sticks, and a turnip. All right. <laughs> what do you have? He's like, spaghetti, vanilla pudding, and beets. All right. My other buddy's pouring beer into his Rice Krispies. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I felt pressured. They had it. <laughs> Snap, crackle, burp. All right, let's do that. I will eat fast food, I admit it. I try to avoid it, but you know, I get a hunkering for it, you know. I went to a fast food joint the other day, went in the restaurant, not the drive-through, standing in line, woman in front of me, she's ordering. She's like, yeah, can I get the bacon, western, cheeseburger, whatever. Guy behind the counter says, uh, yes, ma'am, would you like to make that the combo? It was like this lady had to choose a college all of a sudden. She was like, the combo? Ooh, whoa. Uh, she's looking around for help. I'm like, it's not Sophie's choice. Do you want it or not? All right, it's not that hard. Finally, she says, and I quote, I don't get it. Who says I don't get it? I don't get it. What comes with the combo? I just snap. I'm like, Brussels sprouts and Ovaltine. What do you think comes with the combo? Is this your first day in America? How many things are on that hamburger in 2021? Oh, the combo, what that is? That's a burger and crackers and gum. It's our burger cracker gum combo. Now there's no drink. We call it our dry mouth special. Amateurs, and I, I, I'll eat fast food. I will not do the dollar menu. No, 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 charge me more, okay? 
some things need to cost. Were your dollar hamburgers, dollar tacos? You mean to tell me you're charging me a dollar and a hamburger and you're still making a profit? <laughs> what part of the cow is this? This is the eyelid of the cow? <laughs> Nick Nostril? I, come on. I, had more beef in a Tic Tac. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Amateur nation, man. Amateur. I went to a party the other day. Called my friend up and said, hey, I'm coming down. Do you need me to bring anything? He's like, no, I think we're good. Just come on down. Then I hear some women in the background yelling something. And he goes, ah, do me a favor. Some of the women here, they're asking for donuts. Can you stop by Krispy Kreme? I'm like, all right. Donut party. <laughs> Let's get bloated. I'm like, all right. <laughs> But they want it, I'll go get it. So I go to Krispy, it's like 8.45 at night, okay? I'm the last customer of the day. I'm the only person there. It's just me and Mrs. Cream. I don't know what her name is. <laughs> and I'm polite, I go, yeah, can I get two dozen glazed? She goes, is that for here to go? <laughs> yeah, here. And uh, do you sell insulin too? Uh, where can I plug in my defibrillator? Because. I'm gonna eat 24 donuts now. <laughs> Here's my cell phone. Dial 911 and just kind of hover over the send button, all right? Keep an eye on me. <laughs> amateurs. Oh, you can bet there's amateurs in the dating world. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm a comedian, all right? I, oh, and I go out with women. I like chatty women. I, 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 like, I love good back and forth, good banter, good conversation. I don't want to be the guy always keeping the conversation going. But be careful what you wish for, because the last woman I went out with, wow, she could talk. She could talk. And we went out to dinner. I'm driving her home, and I remember thinking to myself, I don't think I've said anything since I ordered my food. <laughs> it was over two hours ago. And that was to the waiter. So she sees the look on my face and she's mortified. She's like, I am so sorry, I'm sorry, I'm doing it again. I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. I'm sorry, I'm still talking. Am I talking now? I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like relax, okay? It's our first date, all right? First date jitters, you're a little bit nervous. I'm way out of your league, calm down. I, uh, no, I did not say that. I did not say that, but thank you, sir. I just wanna say what an honor and a privilege it is for you to be here tonight. All right, no, just. So this is why the married people need to stay married. Here's what's out there. She goes, do you wanna hear something really weird? I'm like, do I ever? <laughs> On our first date, you mutant, but go ahead. Her words, I honestly believe that as long as I keep talking, I cannot die. <laughs> I know, I said, actually, you could not be more wrong because if you don't shut up, <laughs> I'm gonna drive this car into the wall and kill us both, really. Please. Went out with another woman uh, before that, about five dates. That's not a relationship, right? Five dates? Oh, no, just back me up. Somebody is like, I've had some people like, no, that's, I'm like, five dates over the, nice person, didn't do anything wrong, but I remember we were out on a date and I was thinking to myself, eh, this is probably our last date. I should probably do the responsible thing and end this. She reads into my brain waves and blurts out, I think we need to go to couples counseling. <laughs> yeah, that's like taking a goldfish to the vet. Why? <laughs> I'm gonna get another goldfish. I don't even know what your last name is, all right? He's like, get out of my car, all right? He's like, no, I'm not gonna stop. Just roll, seriously. I'll leave you with this piece of advice, okay? And who better? <laughs> Just what you wanna hear. It's like, oh, okay. all right, uh, dating or married, sir? Married. How long? 11 years. Oh, that's dumb. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay. I have nobody, so everyone in love is like my mortal enemy. Anyone just da on, on a date here? Just dating? No, go ahead. I like how you raise your hand and she's like, he's like, no! <laughs> It'll be painless. Okay. What is your name? And your husband? Tyler. Tyler. Okay. Don't say it out loud. I want you to think of one thing about his personality that you love most. I'll come back to you. Okay. Uh, what's your name? Noel. Noel. I, I like how you paused. You had to think for a second. <gasps> Noel. And your boyfriend? My husband. Your husband. <laughs> Did you not hear the part earlier when I was looking for dating people? That's, that's fine. How long have you guys been married? 17 years. 17? Oh, losers. Uh, <laughs> same question. What, what's your husband's name? Mark. Mark, I'll come back to you. Think of what, my point is, this is for the single men, whether you're dating or married or engaged or whatever. Look, the physical's easy. Wow, she's really pretty. Wow, he's good looking. And then as time goes on, you learn to fall in love with their personality. <laughs> it's, oh. No wrong answers. What do you love about your husband? He's really caring. I always, he always makes a point to take care of me. 
Oh, that's so sissy. Uh, that's, that's nice. And what about you, speed bump? What, uh, monkey rich? You know. no, what do you love about your husband? Sense of humor, which is the most common, there are no wrong answers, sense of humor, most common answer. Here's my point, and I don't wish anything bad on anybody in this room, but whether you're, this is especially for the men, whether you're single or dating or engaged or married, the reason women love you in the beginning of the relationship is the same reason they hate you in the end. <laughs> What's your name? Crystal. Crystal and I start going out. What do you think I get all the time? Sense of humor. Sense of humor, right? That's how I want to get the sense of humor. And that's all, for the first three months, all I hear from Crystal, you're so funny. You're so funny. I love your sense of humor. You're so funny. You make, you, you make me laugh. One year later, everything's a joke to you. I'm Lou Santini. Thank you so much. I had a great time today. You guys are great. Thank you so much.